There's been a lot of talk lately about artificial intelligence or AI and how it can be used as a tool for many different things. Well, now artists are using it as a tool to bring their creations to life. Interesting, yes, but is it art? I'm Paul Croner, and we're at Studio Croner at 130 West Court Street, downtown Cincinnati. Alan Brown came to the gallery about a year ago to show me his portfolio. Part of his portfolio was a segment of pieces created by AI, and I'm like, what? What do you mean? And I looked at the work, and I was sort of appalled by it and freaked out. And, you know, like a lot of people thinking, well, this is the end of the world. Uh, and then I went home, and I thought, well, now I got to do a show about it. And we have to really think about it in the context of whether we can call this art or not. So that's where the show title came from and the whole idea for the show. I have to admit, I go back and forth on it at times, but um, to me, if, if you are bringing intention and you're bringing uh, an, your heart and your mind and aligning it with your skills to try to express something, I think that's art. All the artists involved in this show are using different platforms to work with, or three different platforms, and looking at the different artists. Uh, Mid Journey is a pr uh, primary AI engine they're using. Also, Dolly 2, Starry AI. This is somebody working at a computer using their imagination and their vision of what something might be and trying to conjure up images. And then it's a matter of curation and iteration, uh, going through the process, looking at what you come out with, going, that works, this doesn't work, this works, that doesn't work, and iterating over time to get to an image that starts to be able to express what the artist wants, wants the piece to express. A number of these artists involved in this show also then take that and do some transformative work in Photoshop or other post-production uh, software packages. I'd love to share the work of the five artists and have you meet them personally and have them talk about their work if you're okay with that. It, it really, for me, has been always exploration, trying things out, experimenting to see what things work and what things don't work. And the beauty of AI really is it's allowed me to go beyond what my original strengths were. Um, I'm not a painter. I don't draw. I started out as a photographer, so I can certainly do that. But this has just opened up the, the door for me for all kinds of things. My background is more in commercial photography, which is far removed from the art world. And so I started creating, you know, backgrounds or kitchen scenes that I could use behind these images. And they could be so unique and so different. So the work you see behind me is just kind of different things. I'm, I'm really starting to branch out and explore other things other than just the food because this is taking me back to, you know, having my first camera and being able to do just anything. You know, I didn't know what wasn't possible yet. And so you just start exploring and trying stuff. And so that's what I've been doing is, you know, can I do landscapes? I'm inspired by certain people that are doing these, still trying to figure that whole space out and see where it can work in my work and where it can work in my art. My primary interest with AI is to create comprehensive pieces that go along with the concept that I really pursue photographically. I am immersed in a series that I, a continuing series with my mother. She suffers, suffers from mental illness and the journey that we share together has become the foundation of a lot of my work. So it's really a journey of um, memory, longing, forgiveness. And so for me, if I can tap into that, I was able to confront AI and bring in into it the soulful imagery that I want to create. So when I started to create this work, it was giving me an extension to the series that I was working on. Yeah, the prompts are very personal. And that's really, I believe, how our soul can be sort of integrated in the work rather than just a machine generating something. I've been involved in exploring new forms in technology and art for about 30 years now. I'm always interested in what's, you know, what's at the edge of creativity and technology. And I've been looking at almost like AI and prompting as a form of, of writing, as a foe of prose, and then how that translates into imagery. You can see there's like a lot of calligraphy and things that look like, you know, Arabic or Persian writing. And, um, you know, a lot of my family is Middle Eastern. One thing that I was looking at is one of the phrases I use is Mongolian abstract calligraphy, which is a thing, you know, and then um, put that together with um, 
you know, abstraction and, and color and um, uh, Persian writing and all these things. And, you know, then these things come out. Well, I'm a multidisciplinary designer, so I started my career in 3D and have worked with all sorts of digital media. Um, so I actually first encountered AI through some architecture accounts I was following. I love color. Um, I think the recent trend lately has been very minimal, so that's something I feel like I've been missing in my life. It's just brightness and color, so that's something I try to bring to all my work. Generating images that make people feel happy. Color has a really strong uh, impact on your emotions. So um, this particular series, I started making on a day in January. Um, I live in one of the cloudiest places in the world. So I thought, what's well, gonna make me feel happy today? I wanna, I wanna feel like I'm at the beach. Um, so then that sort of kicked off this whole series of um, kind of these Midwest landscapes and places I love to be outdoors around the Midwest and kind of celebrating that, um, making them feel big and exciting and colorful. You know, how, how extreme can we get? Um, these images are super colorful. They're highly uh, saturated. Um, they're a little bit extra. And I think um, for me, that's something that sort of reminds us like this is something we need to um, consider carefully how we're going to use it and uh, maybe not let it run away. <laughs> you know, as I've gone through this show from the onset where I was like, oh my God, you know, I now look at it and go, oh no, this is, this is a legit tool for us to use. And so I think it's art. Fascinating. Yeah, I want to thank Paul again for having me out to the gallery. So it runs through June. They're also going to be doing in the coming week, they're going to have a panel discussion over the legality of ownership of AI created art. So they're going to have an attorney there with them coming mm -hmm. up, I believe, next Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, you can get more information about that online. But just fascinating the way that I they know. can make all of these pieces look similar. They start with the AI prompt and then put their own touches on it. There's so many issues to be worked out with AI. Mm -hmm. And it's all coming our way. It is. Well, sure. I have to say something about that shirt that he had on. I could see you wearing that shirt. I love the shirt, Paul. So we have to uh, <laughs> share some styling tips exactly. with each other.